What up, Internet? Kurt here, geeking out on community in the office. First up, community, which I am still on the fence about. Two episodes in here. The plot was a classic sitcom move. Pierce trapped in the panic room. They gotta get him out. Pierce, are you okay? But is Pierce really fooling them? Oh, he is. Gotcha! But now it turns out they're all trapped. And then uh, our boy Gus comes in there to save the day. Kill! But I was okay with this plot because we got to see a ton of Pierce's place. Pierce is just like Barney on How I Met Your Mother. He's eccentric enough and has enough money. 300 inch flat screen. Where you know that his home is gonna be crazy. They only sell them in Japan, but I know a guy. And Pierce's place definitely delivers. Like David Lee Roth threw up Miami Vice. Especially for all the classic Chevys. That's awesome. I feel like they're still really driving home who these characters are. Abed loves TV too much. I remember when the show was about a community college. And Britt is a shrink. I'm gonna set my shrink rate at daddy issues and blast that sucker Full of closure. It's like they're beating us over the heads with it. I did like Abed discovering the wall, though. It's the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. There were funny moments, for sure. The best one, though, is when we realized that the code was the year that the bandit room was installed. Of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't be pointless. I don't know why, but I just, like, died. <laughs> I thought it was a good spin on the Spaceballs joke of having an obvious code. The one, two, three, four, five. It's the kind of thing an idiot would have on his luggage! <laughs> Also, was Abed supposed to be Calvin? If so, where are the shants? Calvin did not wear pants. Anyway, onto the office, which was another emotional roller coaster. Last week, with a solo Brian at dinner, I came to the realization, begrudgingly, that I was grateful for his character. Because it brought Pam and Jim closer together. Because they realized what mistake they were making. And it was all the more sweeter when they reconciled. You really want to fight on Valentine's Day? Yeah, I do. And I mean, by reconciled, they agreed to go home and fight on Valentine's Day, but Jim called her Beasley. It was so sweet. All right, put your dukes up, Beasley. And then flash forward to this week, and they're riffing like old times. Wait, are you saying that into the phone, or are you saying that to Call me? Call you right back. What were you saying? I loved it. And just when I was getting comfortable that they were wrapped up, they throw another wrench in the spokes and have Pam not want to work in Philly. I don't know if I want this. Now, I get that she doesn't want to be a secretary again, but there are other jobs in Philadelphia, right? I did love Bob Odenkirk <laughs> as a real estate Michael Scott. They worship me, you know, but... They like me. I loved his poster choice. His Larry David impression was spot on. Pretty, pretty cool. Larry David. Curb your enthusiasm. Like, I was riding high off how funny that was. And, and you know, I'm right back to being terrified. But I'm hooked. I'm hooked on Jim and Pam and what's going to happen to him. And you know what? That hasn't happened for, like, four seasons. It's interesting, right? It's fascinating. So they're doing it right this year. <laughs> Toby's thing was funny with the Scranton Strangler. But I'm bummed because I forever wanted it to be Will Ferrell. Also, I noticed a little error. Nellie's reading the newspaper. It says one thing. And then the next cut, it doesn't say it. Haha. <laughs> anyway, it's minor. But still, caught it. Ratings, community, 8 out of 10. Office, 9 out of 10. I got to give it a 9 because Andy says booger bubble. My whole life is a booger bubble. <laughs> That's worth a 9. Papa Smurf, come back to the mushroom.